Thou hast protected me, O God, from the gathering of the evildoers. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Those words that I just said to you were taken from today's introit of the Mass of St. Peter Verona or of St. Peter Martyr. He's one of those saints that you can never forget. Of course, there's a story of how he died writing. He was a martyr for the faith. And as he lay there with a, a sword stuck into him and uh, he took some of his own blood and wrote out the first article of the faith. And in that way, he died. A beautiful way for someone who lives for Christ, his whole life for Christ, to, to die. But as I was preparing for this little sermon, I thought to myself, well, there are two things that really stand out that we can all learn from. One day, remember he was a Dominican monk, one evening he was in his cell. It was later in the evening, and he was deep in prayer. Just at the moment that a monk passed by, St. Peter had a beautiful apparition. It was St. Agnes along with St. Cecilia and Catherine as well. They were all there speaking with him. And I can only imagine the heavenly wisdom that they were speaking about with him. It must have been quite the conversation. But that old monk, very well-meaning, I'm sure, he heard all these voices. He heard that they, some of them were, were the voices of females. It was forbidden, of course, for a monk to have a lady in his room. So he went right away and he told the superior what had happened. The superior called St. Peter right out in front of everybody and accused him of what he had heard. And do you know what St. Peter did? Here's a good lesson for us, especially for children. He knelt down and he didn't admit his guilt because he was so humble. He didn't want them to find out about the heavenly apparition. He knelt down and said, I have sinned. Give me my punishment. Children, remember sometimes you might get in trouble for something that you didn't do that one of your siblings did. But as my father always said, well, that's for all the times that you should have gotten it, but didn't. You have to remember that. So take your punishments graciously. In any case, he was banished to another convent. There he, he was treated rather badly, sort of a prisoner. And he was not allowed to associate with anyone and he couldn't preach. That was a great trial for St. Peter. He, he loved to preach and did an awful lot of good by means of sermons. Well, for months he was that way. He, he dealt with it all very patiently. But as you can imagine, even every saint has a human side, and even human weaknesses. He began to complain to our Lord, Lord, you know my innocence, and you might be the only one who knows my innocence, but how long do I have to wait until my innocence is proved? And then he heard the voice of our blessed Lord, he said, did I deserve to be nailed to the cross? And St. Peter, he, he kind of fell back in shame, and he fell to the floor, and from that moment he received the special grace of always longing for the cross. It's a very special grace, one that the greatest of saints have always developed. You and I, we've got to work at it, work at, it, at, at learning even to be patient just to keep our the bare minimum of patience in the midst of sufferings. But the saints, they receive these special graces to actually love and to search out crosses. Well, he eventually, his innocence was made known. He was set free and he began preaching again and made many, many converts. And at that point, the devil, 
who is always angry, and whenever something good is about to happen, remember, the devil gets very active and very mischievous and causes all sorts of havoc. It happens all the time. So don't get discouraged whenever that happens in your life. Well, he tempted, caused all sorts of temptations for St. Peter Martyr and in order to weaken his faith. Well, it didn't work. St. Peter fought very bravely against it. And at last, he fell to his knees again and did what every good Catholic should do. He invoked his Heavenly Mother. And Our Lady answered him in the same words that our Lord answered to St. Peter the Apostle. Peter, I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not and that, that, that uh, you should indeed confirm your brethren in their faith. Mary is a great protector. Now what can we learn from these, these two stories? They kind of go hand in hand. God, our Father, is both the Father and protector of the innocent. When your name is smeared, when you are accused or calumniated or detracted against, it's okay. That is, that's a punishment sometimes from God, or rather a special grace. But whenever you get troubled by those things, remember one thing. You're not necessarily going to solve the problem. Instead, you fall to your knees. You cry out to Our Lady, the Mother of Good Counsel. You say, Mother, what am I to do? She'll always give the correct answer. She'll never misguide you. And in the end, the innocent will be protected and all good names restored. And that's how our faith works. It's beautiful. Not everything relies upon us, but upon God and upon our Heavenly Mother. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.